In 1988, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall starred in Coming to America, a romantic comedy directed by John Landis. Set in the fictional African country called Zamunda, Murphy plays Prince Akeem, who has just turned 21 and is sick of living a life of luxury and having servants picking up after him. When Akeem learns that he is arranged to be married by his parents, played by James Earl Jones and Madge Sinclair, he travels to New York with his personal aide, Semi, played by Hall, in order to live a life where he has to look after himself and find a bride who will love him for him, not for his wealth. After catching sight of Lisa, played by Shari Headley, and falling in love with her, he tries to get acquainted with her by working at her father's restaurant, McDowell's, home of the Big Mick. But will Akeem's fairy tale dream of a happily ever after really work? And how could he convince his father to allow this unorthodox romance in this fun, well-meaning comedy classic? So grab a Big Mick from your local McDowell's and get ready to put sexual chocolate on the old record player as we explore 10 things that you didn't know about coming to America. Let's check it out. Number 10, it came from the mind of Eddie Murphy. Coming to America was an idea that came from Eddie Murphy himself. Although he didn't write the screenplay for the movie, he created the story. His original story was actually called The Quest, and his motivation for coming up with the story about an African prince traveling to New York to seek a bride was because Murphy wanted to do something completely different. He felt that in all his movies he had starred in at that point, he was basically playing himself. So he wanted to try something different and actually base his skills on a character rather than Eddie Murphy the comedian. Murphy stated that he came up with the story while on tour when he was riding in the back of a bus. Co-star Arsenio Hall further explains that the concept of coming to America explores the difficulties of celebrities finding love with partners who will love them for them, not just for their wealth and status. As for changing the title from The Quest to Coming to America, I actually prefer Coming to America because let's face it, the quest is kind of generic and has been used several times now. Number nine, troubled working relationship. Eddie Murphy originally intended to direct Coming to America himself, but he then offered the job to John Landis and he took it. The two had previously worked together on trading places five years earlier and had a great working relationship. Murphy also said that he wanted to help Landis out, as his last movies prior to coming to America weren't very good, and his career was being overshadowed by the court case surrounding the Twilight Zone movie incident. However, unlike Trading Places, where they got along really well, it seemed that this time there was conflict between the two. Murphy said that when he starred in Trading Places, he was basically the new kid coming into the industry, and that's how Landis treated him, and he was okay with that at the time. However, when it came time to filming Coming to America, he felt that Landis was still treating him like the new kid, despite the fact that he felt that he had grown and matured since Trading Places. Murphy said because of this, their personalities clashed. Landis' side of the story is that when he worked with Murphy on Trading Places, he was fresh and funny and full of energy. But when it came time to coming to America, he was a bit of a pig and spoke to everyone like crap. But he did further state that Murphy is wonderful in the movie. Look, I'm staying neutral in this one as I love both Eddie Murphy and John Landis. My guess is maybe they both had big egos at that point of their careers and their egos clashed. Also, maybe there was a power dynamic struggle. As for trading places, Landis recruited Murphy, but for coming to America, Murphy recruited Landis. Maybe the role reversal caused issues. Number eight, makeup wizardry. As Coming to America was directed by John Landis, there were several people who worked on the movie who frequently collaborated with Landis, such as the movie's producer, George Falsey Jr. However, another Landis regular that was on board the movie was movie makeup legend Rick Baker. Baker and Landis had worked together on several films, although their most famous collaboration is probably an American werewolf in London. Baker provides special makeup effects for both Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, with both actors playing several roles in the movie. 
such as the barbershop workers and of course some of my favourite characters, Reverend Brown played by Hall and Randy Watson, the soul singer of Sexual Chocolate played by Murphy. Honestly, their transformations are so good in coming to America, I'm often so distracted by how convincing they are, I often forget that a young Cuba Gooding Jr. is in this scene. Even though the makeup in Coming to America isn't as striking as werewolf or zombie makeup, I still think it's some of Rick Baker's best work, and playing multiple characters under heavy makeup would go on to be a trait Eddie Murphy would go on to do in several following movies. Seriously though, I really wish the Randy Watson character got his own spin-off movie. Number 7, The Misadventures of Eddie and Arsenio. To me, and probably to many others, Coming to America is just as much an Arsenio Hall movie than it is an Eddie Murphy one. He's really funny, charismatic, and has genuine, enjoyable screen moments. That and I feel like he has really good chemistry with Murphy. When the two main leads did an interview regarding Coming to America, they were asked how they met. Eddie Murphy said that Arsenio trashed him in a magazine article. Arsenio interjected that it was because he was informed by the magazine journalist that Murphy publicly said that there are only two decent comedians in America, of which did not include Arsenio. Hall then joked that Murphy flew to LA to beat him up, which I'm guessing was a joke. Watching the interview, the two seem to have a sparring connection, where they are constantly trying to one-up each other, but in a fun, playful way. And I think that playful, trying to outdo each other banter shows on screen and benefits the movie. Hall also said that Murphy called him and asked him if he wanted to take a break from the Ghostbusters cartoon to star in Coming to America, as at that time, Hall was voicing the character Winston Zeddemore for the real Ghostbusters animated series. When asked what their best experience while making the movie was, both Arsenio and a slightly hesitant Murphy speak of an incident where they went on a break while filming at 1am, where they went to a disco and partied, and then took a heap of the disco patrons back to the set with them, with Hall finalising that they quote, took people home. Maybe I'm wrong, but the cheeky way Arsenio Hall said they took people home makes me think that, you know, you know, they got up to some of the old Humpty Dumpty. But yeah, I'm probably wrong. Number six, unused and alternative posters. The movie poster for Coming to America was drawn up by movie poster legend Drew Struzan, where we see a giant towering Eddie Murphy on the streets of New York with the road turning into a red carpet, I guess demonstrating that he's a wealthy, important person arriving at low economic destinations. The poster is fun and exciting. But what is interesting is if you look at the city in the background, you'll see this background was also used for early designs of Struzan's Crocodile Dundee 2 poster, which also features a main character, or in this case characters, in giant mode looming over the city. The main poster for Crocodile Dundee 2 wasn't eventually illustrated by Struzan after all, maybe because it did look too similar to Coming to America. Then there is this alternative poster, which has a gold shiny approach, which I feel is going for a dollar note look. After all, Akeem has his face printed on money in the movie itself. This poster also tries to demonstrate the visual differences between New York and Zamunda. It's illustrated perfectly enough, but I do like the main poster better. Unused posters once again see Eddie Murphy as a giant in New York, only he's sharing the limelight with the Statue of Liberty. I guess these weren't used as the Statue of Liberty doesn't play a big part in the movie. When the VHS advert came out to advertise Coming to America's VHS release, this poster was used, which once again shows the Statue of Liberty, only this time Eddie Murphy isn't in sight. I guess he left to purchase the movie on VHS, and by the looks of the poster to also get a Pepsi as well. Then finally there is this poster which was used in certain parts of the world, showing the Akeem character with a broom, which I guess is a callback to Akeem wanting to pick up after himself, or becoming a cleaner at McDowell's, or both. But something's just not right about this poster. To me, Eddie Murphy's face just, I don't know, looks a little off. Number five, dance choreography. At the start of Coming to America, we see a really extravagant dance number in the Royal Palace of Zamunda, where we see some really awesome dancing from the performers. And unless I'm mistaken, I believe this dance scene is at least a minute or two long. This dance scene was actually choreographed by pop star Paula Abdul. Abdul said that she got the job on Coming to America for her choreography work with Janet Jackson. 
and said that when she worked on Coming to America, she was very young and new to the industry. And when John Landis met her on the set, he said, what are you, a teenager? The irony being is that she was in fact a teenager. But she also says that the work she did on Coming to America was a highlight in her career, with her being proud of the results. And Abdul was no stranger to choreography dance scenes for movies, as one year earlier she also choreographed the dance scene for the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Running Man. Number 4. McDowell's Became Real in Coming to America, we learn of the fictional McDonald's rip-off restaurant, McDowell's, which was owned by Cleo McDowell, played brilliantly by John Amos. Whenever I used to watch Coming to America, I always thought the restaurant used for McDowell's was a McDonald's, which allowed the movie's production to slightly alter the restaurant. You know, change the logo, stuff like that. However, the restaurant used for McDowell's was actually a Wendy's restaurant, which was located in Queens. Apparently, while filming, a manager at a nearby McDonald's got wind of McDowell's and thought it was an actual McDonald's ripoff and threatened a lawsuit, till learning that it was just a Wendy's redecorated for a movie. The Wendy's restaurant has since been demolished, but McDowell's still lives on, as not only does the fictional company have its own Yelp page, but McDowell's actually became a reality in 2018 in a Halloween celebration to mark coming to America's 30th anniversary, as an LA sandwich shop transformed itself into a McDowell's, complete with the employees' uniforms as seen in the movie. Also, along with a few specials like Zamanda Fries, so fans of the movie for a brief time could actually dine in the famous fictional restaurant. <laughs> I honestly really want to try some Zamanda Fries. Number 3. Returning Characters not only does Coming to America see the return of Eddie Murphy and John Landis working together, but it also acts as something of a sequel to their previous movie Trading Places, in a scene where the Akeem character gives some money to a homeless man in the street. The homeless man was in fact Mortimer Duke, who is now living on the street with his brother, Randolph, with them reprising their roles from Trading Places. The rich brothers who owned a brokerage firm who after the events of the movie are now broke and living on the streets. Where after receiving a huge chunk of money from Akeem, Rudolph gleefully says, we're back. Which makes me wonder if this was setting up a Trading Places follow-up, which of course didn't happen. Coming to America is actually full of cameos from famous or would-be famous people, including Cuba Gooding Jr. as mentioned, along with Samuel L. Jackson and even director Toby Hooper. There are tons of cameos and it's fun watching the movie to try and point them all out. Comment below who was your favourite cameo in Coming to America, even if it was an actor that I might have missed. Number 2. Failed TV Series This seems to be a common theme in my show these days, particularly with comedy movies, but a TV pilot of Coming to America was filmed for CBS, with the intentions of making a TV series based on the movie. And as with other TV shows based on movies, it consisted of a new cast. The focus wasn't even on Akeem anymore, but a new prince called Prince Tarek, played by Tommy Davidson. However, the series wasn't picked up, but the pilot was broadcast as a TV special on CBS in 1989. There were two remakes of Coming to America, an Indian version called My Dear Martha Dan, and one produced in Hong Kong called Tycoon, with both the remakes coming out in 1990. However, Coming to America is coming back in an official capacity with Coming to America, with the two in the title replaced with the number two, with most of the cast returning, including Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, and James Earl Jones. And the sequel apparently revolves around Akeem, who is now King of Zamunda, heading back to Queens to track down his son that he never knew about. So, we'll just have to wait and see what Coming to America has to bring. Number 1. Coming to the Box Office Despite going on to become a well-loved movie, Coming to America was somewhat off to an icy start, when a press screening in New York proved to be disastrous, with the movie getting unfavourable reviews. After this screening, Paramount Pictures, whom were distributing Coming to America, cancelled further press screenings, probably to stop further negative word of mouth about the movie, which in turn could have affected the movie's box office performance but worries and fears were put to rest once Coming to America was commercially released, with it opening up at the number one spot in the box office, and is believed to have grossed up to $350 million on a $36 million budget. 
The movie also got praised by critics, with it being seen as a fairy tale romantic story with an Eddie Murphy touch. Which makes you wonder if the attendees at the New York press screenings were just having a bad day when they initially saw the film. Some critics did miss Eddie Murphy's more high-wired, fast-talking energy that he usually brings to his movies, but that was the point. Murphy was trying to expand on his talents and try something different. Murphy and director Landis even seemed to bury the hatchet with their issues while working on the movie, for the time being at least, as they would pair up again several years later to work on Beverly Hills Cop 3. But all said and done, Coming to America is a great comedy from the 80s. And underneath the jokes and comical dialogue and spectacular makeup effects, it's actually a movie with a positive message about finding someone who loves you for you. Interestingly, I always find Eddie Murphy to play more the straight man in Coming to America, rather than the witty, jokey, funny man that he usually plays. I mean, yeah, he's still funny, but it's a different kind of humour. Whereas most of his comedies are driven by dialogue, I feel like this one has more of a situational type of humour. It's the story and scenarios itself that is funny. I always feel like Murphy opens his heart more in Coming to America, and shows more of a mature, kinder side to his personality, and it comes off as being truly genuine. So if you're a fan of Eddie Murphy or comedy movies from the 80s, then I say definitely check out Coming to America. Anyway, I'm Minty and I'm off to eat a Big Mick. See ya!